the graphing techniques that we've talked about before still apply no matter what kind of function that we have. This is an exponential function. That means we know what the shape is going to look like, right? We should already have in our minds that it should do something like this. It should be flat on one end and it should just get crazy out of control on the other hand, right? That's my exponential shape. Now, what have I done to this guy? Excuse me? If I look up here, I can see this is being inside my parentheses, inside my exponential function. <coughs> so that means I'm going to the right two and I'm going down five. So make sure that you make those appropriate uh, translations. If I'm going down five units, that meant that even though my <coughs> bless you, horizontal asymptote was right here at y equals zero, where will it be now? Down 5, so y equals negative 5, right? Now, I want you to pay attention to where your new origin is, okay? I was right here at the origin, but what did you say I, I needed to do? Right 2 and down 5, so this is going to act as my new origin. Okay? All of the points that I had before are now going to be based off of this guy right here. But you still don't have I don't have a vertical asymptote, right? The, what I have here in pink is the, is the designation for my horizontal asymptote. I just did this vertically so I could see where my new origin was. Basically, I took this set of axes and I shifted it down to be right here. What are your key points? If this is like your new zero, zero, what was your main key point? Well, negative one. <coughs> one half, zero, one, one, two, and so on, right? Those were your key points. Think about where did they come from? They came from the key points that were right here. Here, here, and so on. These were the key points you had for your original. This was your original exponential function right here. Y'all see that? Every single point that I had originally, I'm doing what? Right two, down five. So if I take this point, go one, two to the right and down, one, two, three, four, five. There it is. Again, I like to. Why is it then the same? Uh, if we're taking x and we're subtracting it to two and then applying it to the two and then subtracting five. It's just like all the shifting and the translation that we did for the absolute value. We're not doing the anything, we're just shifting the axis and transferring I'm the exact same shape. Yep, just like I did before. We did it with the squaring function, square root, cube root, even the reciprocal functions. Those guys that kind of did this. Wait, so we're shifting the point, or we're actually starting from our new origin, or is it the same thing? It's the same thing. Same things we, that we've always yeah, done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to base, base it off of my horizontal asymptote. So this has a distance of 1. This has a distance of 2. What should be the next one? 4. And the distance of 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. And the distance of what? 16. Well, this only gives me 14. So 16 would be somewhere up here at the top. But at least it gives, gives me an idea about where I'm supposed to be. So connect these dots, connect these points. See, by having this point up here, I know where I'm aiming. So I'm not going to go whoop, over here to the right. I'm aiming for, aiming for that point. And I just finished graphing this guy down here. Do not go below your horizontal asymptote, but you will get really, really, really close to that guy. But if you did a t-table for this, you'd come yep. up with different y's. Nope. you come up with the exact same ones. Well, if you replace x with negative 1, right, you're going to get 2 to the negative third. But that's, if I replace 
with negative one, I'm going to have this Talk point. About this a t table. No, I understand that. Okay. So, but when you do a t table, you are not basing those off of here. You make a t table based on the x and the y graph that you have here. The cheap way and the easy way for graphing, I don't do a t table. I take those original points and I base them off of my new origin. So if I were to plug in x equals 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And you see I have the coordinates there of 2, negative 4. If I plugged in 3, 2 to the 3 minus 2, so that's 2 to the first is 2, minus 5 is negative 3, and there is 3 negative 3 in terms of the ordered pair. But what I'm really doing here is I'm seeing this as being my 0, 1, and my 1, 2. Okay. Right, 0, 1, you 1, 2, and so on. From the original. Yes. Okay. Right, that's well, where we have to make sure we understand when I'm making a t table, yeah. it's based well, off we did of the. We make a t table, but now we're not. Right, it's just like all the, all the guys we um, were doing before. And you see the, the graph is, it's, there it is. That's what the computer tells me, and it matches up. You see it gets really, really flat here. This guy is never, ever completely flat. But of course, with the limitations we have with the computer, with the printing, it will appear that way.